Greetings, my subscribers, as well as my newly subscribers. Thank you all for coming. Now, for today, I'm going to demonstrate to you how I prepare my delicious meal, and that would have been some beef stew with food. And the food have been dumped in and yam with some steamed vegetables. Now, guys, this demonstration is worth while watching. I don't want to miss it, so stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in. Now here in the bowl I have some beef stew. So what I did was to cut them up, you know, clean up it, cut out the excessive fat, you know what I mean? Wash with lime juice and vinegar and thing. You know what I mean? So it's properly washed now. So I have some seasoning here. And what is in the bowl here is some scotch bunny pepper and garlic, right? And I have some pimented berries here. Now these are the seasons I'm gonna use to season now. You know what I mean? And now to marinate. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just add my garlic. Now this is approximately six cloves of garlic. Mm-hmm. Six cloves of garlic. And uh, my fermented berries. Right. Then I'm gonna add my maga pepper season. Uh huh. Now adding the amount of um maga pepper has come to the amount of um beef stew that I have here in the container. All right. Now this is the finished one. So let me just, just throw it what's left in it. All right. Next, I'm going to add some soy sauce, and that's the um, that's a Chinese soy sauce. All right. Now, for me, guys, I really don't like to use a browning. You know, people like to use a browning, but for me, I have a preference not to use it. It's it's kind of. If you don't know what you're doing, you add too much browning, it will be too dark. Furthermore, the browning can have a, a funny taste. I don't like it. You know what I mean? So I rather use my soy sauce. But you can use your um, browning if you want. Alright, so this is the last of it, so it's finished. I don't dispose of those in the uh, bin. Alright, I'm going to pop the other one open. But let me just go ahead and just stir this up. And then I'll know if it is seasoned to my suit, you know what I mean? Now be in mind, you know, um, the uh, garlic and the scotch pan pepper is just, just the two seasons I'm using with the fermented berries to allow the meat to marinate. I know when the, the meat cooked down and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the seasonings. You feel me? So this is just a seasoning process, all right? And um, as you can see, even though I added a little bit of soy sauce in it, and it was just to change the color of the meat. You feel me? But I will add no soy sauce to it as soon as, um, you know, it all eventually. Pressure it, because I'm gonna pressure it, right? Pressure it and allow it to, to be tender, okay? No beef can be tough in a sense. So you want to make sure that you tenderize it and get it to your suit, and then from there, you know, I'll just pour it in the pot and then gather the rest of the seasonings and so forth and just add it to it. And I'm gonna just taste it. 
high right you know what it needs it needs a little more of the vagal purple season so i'm gonna brush this one open here that i have i'm gonna say no guys that you the others, the other amount of maggi I put season to the meat because you know the more the meat is the more season going to add to it. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. You know, it's going to require more season because it depends on the amount of meat that you are seasoning. Alright, so let me just pop this open now. Add some more season to it. I don't know guys but for me I like to taste I like to taste my um my meat now when I say taste I don't mean I'm just talking about you know just a tip on my tongue just a taste I wanna know if it's seasoned to my soul you know what I mean yeah I'm gonna go ahead now and just rub this all up But as I said before, this is just the season process. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is to cover it and rest it on the fridge until I'm ready. All right, so let's keep on tuning. All right, so here in the cooker, I have some water. But what I'm gonna do is to season the water, right? Let's add some maggia prep or season within the water. Right. So I added the maggi pepper season into the water. I'm gonna go ahead now and add my beef. Now within the water, all right. Now I did eventually take the beef from the fridge. Okay, it was marinated. You know what I mean? So I take it out of the fridge and set it aside and allow it to chill for a while because you know when it's on the fridge. It's really cool, you know what I mean? So you wanna set it aside and just allow it to chill. You know what I mean? And then you can just go ahead and do what you need to do. So as you can see here in the cooker. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to now just pour some water within the bowl. Just a little water. Just the red something. To rinse it out and then um, pour it within the cooker, like so. Alright? What I'm gonna do next is to allow, you know, the meat, you know, the, the cooker to come to a boil. Allow it to come to a boil, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I just put the meat in, so even though the water's boiling, I have to allow it to come back to a boil and then I'll just go ahead and just cover it, right? I'm just gonna rest this. If I notice, I rest it upside down, you know what I mean? Because I want it to come back to a boil before we can see it. All right, so let's keep on doing it. All right, so it has now coming back to a boil, so I'm going to cover it now. Yeah. Then put the weight on top like so. And you know it's gonna be kicking in a few minutes. So let's keep on shooting. Alright, so the um I'm gonna give the the beef approximately five minutes during the cooker. Alright. Now even when I give it five minutes and I check back and I realize it's still kinda hard. I'm just gonna give it five more minutes. I have no idea already. It's been in five minutes. It's the right timing. 
And if you check it, I realize the beat is still tough. Just want to go ahead and just at least five more minutes again. So, it has just started. So, we're going to start more from the five minutes mark. So that's that's no reason five minutes march not gonna set the day now. There we go. I wait five minutes. Now while the cooker is cooling down, I'm gonna attend to um meet some flour. I mean, because I'll be cooking my stew beef with some food, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna attend to some flour in the bowl, alright? So let's keep on chilling. Now, the bowl before me, I'm gonna pour some flour in it. I'm gonna pour approximately three scoops. That's one, two, and one more. I'll just add a little bit more to it. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna cover the container. Put that aside. And then I'm gonna get some cornmeal. So I'm actually gonna add a three quarter scoop of cornmeal, right? Three quarter scoop. Seal up the container. Side. Now I'm gonna reach for my measuring uh, cup. flour. Alright, so just give the cornmeal and the flour mix. You know what I mean? You want to make sure so everything is combined in here. You know, I mean, I've, I've shown you guys how to do it already. There's nothing new to it. I'm just ensuring that the cornmeal and the flour is mixed. Palette before we can go ahead and add no um, water to it. Now, bear in mind, guys, I did not add no salt to it. I'll add salt within the pot of the water, but I'm not gonna add no salt within the flour mixture. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just pour some water in. Now, I'm not gonna be using too much water at once, just a little water, then mix, then use a little more water, then you mix. Then you don't want to spoil the mixture, right? By adding too much water at once. So I add a little water, then you go in on your mix. Now I could have used my hands to do all this, but you see, I'm trying to avoid all the mess, you know what I mean? Because my hand is going to be messy. So I'm trying to avoid that from happening. Right, so that's why I'm using a spoon. But as soon as we mix it all to a certain, you know, dimension, you know, then I'll just go ahead and just, Add my hands to it, you know. It won't be messy, you know, but just to get rid of this, this, this part here, you know what I mean? But that's why I have to use the spoon. If I was to use my hands, guys, trust me, it would be really messy. And I'm trying to avoid that, so that's why I will now only use the spoon. But when I was younger, when my mother was cooking, she said, she said to me, son, come and need the flour. You know, I'll just come and just use my hand. I will use no spoon. Alright, so the pressure cooker is still cooling down. And I have the pot of water on the stove. I'm just waiting for it to come to a boil. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Alright. Picture this now, guys. Picture this as it. So I can go in now with my hands, alright? Now, be in mind, my hands are clean. 
you know, that's the first thing you have to make sure that your hands are clean before you can go ahead and, um, you know, do anything in terms of, you know, cutting out the meat, need flour, whatever you know what I mean, you have to make sure your hands are clean. Alright, so as you can see, my hands are in it. It won't be as much, it won't be as messy as you would expect because that messy process and use the spoon to get it over with. making dumplings you know you don't want to make them tight now neither do you want to make it make the the dumpling too soft either by adding too much water and that's what i'm gonna say you have better control when you add a look of water then you mix then add a look of water then you mix but if you add too much water at once well our dog never supper the dog is gonna eat your supper <laughs> So you want to try to avoid that from running. Alright, I'm just add some more water again. Now, you see how some folks, you know, like your dumplings tight. But that's for them. For me, I don't like it that way. Alright, my water is almost coming to a boil. I can see it from the cover. So I'm just you know adding some more speed to what I'm doing. I can't tell you guys, this when you your flour, it tires the hand. My God. Oh, man. I remember you using the wrist on to work here, you know, so at some point, your hand is going to get tired. So I'm working it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm working it. Working it. a workout that I, I tell you guys that is a workout so you see my hands are not messy you may have a little flour on it yes but it is not as messy as i do would expect but that's just so it is you know what i mean yeah all right now i'm gonna um get my salt and everything and, and put it aside all right, so let's keep on chewing. I like to push on my dumplings, all right? So I went ahead and made them in small pieces. Now everyone makes a dumpling different, you know what I mean? The greatest thing about it is that it turns out exactly you need it. You know what I mean? So here's my dumpling. They're not big. I like them, you know, just neat you know what i mean yeah now when needing my dumpling right and if it's kind of dry what i'll do dip my hand in the water and tap it in the middle of my palm and then just roll it you know i've said before everyone makes a dumpling different There it is. Tap in my middle of my palm. 
then I start to need it. Alright, like so. Mmm, it's quite simple, there's nothing to it. Nothing to my method, you know what I mean? See that? Quite simple. Let me just pinch on a piece of this one here. Add a tweet. Go out in the middle of my palm. Mix. Roll. Now you maybe wonder why I use water to tap it in the middle of my palm. Even though the they they do or they even don't need it and need it. Exactly what we need it. But the thing about it is that it's become breaking apart and in the container, you will know say at some point with the moisture, you know what I mean? It it kinda make it feel a little dry. So I feel us eventually a little of water in the middle of my palm, you know, and just um, make it soft, that way we can go ahead and just make my dumpling. Alright, see that, so it's quite simple, nothing to it, MTC dumpling. <laughs> Yeah, these are MPC dumplings. You know, you got it in my kitchen, guys. It's a, it's a Tuesday evening. You know, and we've been getting a lot of rain. We have been getting a lot of rain for the past two weeks and more now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a hurricane season. So there's a lot of hurricanes out there. Uh, we uh, experienced one uh, sometime in June, I think. Yeah, it's Burial. Mm -hmm. And uh, Burial came here and it didn't do a really bad destruction, you know what I mean? But it came and it um, damaged, you know, some houses, you know, people lose the rooftop and we had some uh, power lines that went down. We had uh, we had um, trees that fell down on power line. There are trees that fell on on houses and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you know, and uh, I believe in some areas, farmers lose lose some crops. You know. They, they have a, a rainfall within that same time and so forth. But in my region, though, we didn't really sustain a lot of damage all further out in other parishes. But in Montego Bay, when I when I drove around in Montego Bay um, in certain areas, you could see the fallen trees and you know trees fallen car, trees fallen house stuff damaging roof and so forth, you know what I mean? But as I said before, because we are in the hurricane season, we are in the hurricane season actually. That's why we um, experience all this rain here on the island. Alright guys, so the, the, the dumplings are made and placed within the pot. I'm going to uh, get my yam now, because I know the yam is what I'm going to cook the dumpling with. Alright? Alright, so here I have my yam. So I'm gonna peel it. Now I'm going to cut the yam in two, like so. Then I'm gonna place it in a container. 
of water. Yeah, we'll place the container of water and then I'm gonna peel the balance, right? No, I don't like it, my yam is, is too thick. So I like to cut them to a certain level, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Alright. Then I'm gonna cut this one here. The one in the middle, just like so. Put them in a the container. I'm gonna wash them off. I give them a good wash. Okay, no, me, me um eventually hold the yam and the yam. The outer layer the skin is dirty, so you don't have to get a wash, right? So I'm going to now put them in the pot. Into the pot they go. Alright. So I'm going to remove this bowl from here. And put that on the next side. Remove the skins from out the counter. You know, I clean as I go. You know. Clean as I go in the right here, You don't want to leave no mess. So, you know, I'm just cleaning as I go. Alright, so I'm going to remove the knives. I put the board. Okay, so I'm going to see. I'm gonna just clean off this area here. Gotta keep the surrounding clean. Now come to a boil and put in the pot, so I'm going to add some salt to it. That was said before, I did not add no salt to the uh, to the flour, right? Because it don't make sense and add salt to the flour and then add salt within the pot. So I'm adding actually Half teaspoon of salt. So after adding the salt, I'm gonna give it a stir. Now I give it a stir is just to avoid from anything from sticking in the bottom of the pot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So let's give it a stir so that means uh, it loosens anything that is sticking when the pot. Now as you can see, I have, I have three dumplings that I stick together. So I'm just using the spoon to separate them. Yeah, like so. So then all separated. Let me just cover the pot and I will allow them to cook. Yeah. All right, so I'm just sealing up and put some food in out here. Put this in the sink. Right, so I'm gonna allow the water to come to a boil because I did um, add some salt to it and as it give it a stir and because of that you know it lose the heat so I have to cover it and allow it to come back to a boil. Alright mm -hmm. so while <clears throat> While it's coming to a boil, I'm going to attend to the cooker, right? Because I did um, eventually turn the cooker off and allow it to cool. I did give it at least five minutes. So I'm going to check it now to see how tender it is. So let's keep on chewing, right? So while the food is cooking on the other, on the other flame, I'm just going to cut this open. You know what I mean? You now know exactly if it is okay in the five minutes mark. Okay, all right. Seems okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is to now get my pot. Right here, then I'm gonna pour 
pour what's in the cooker into the pot before me here. Let it sit until I'm ready to cook it, to cook it down. All right, guys. So just keep on tuning in. You know I'm gonna get my seasons and everything ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So let's go on with it. All right. All right so. But that's not come to boil, so I'm going to add my uh, vegetables to it. That's some Irish potato and carrots. Now they went ahead and you know peel them and, and wash them off. Okay. Let's turn the water off. I'm going to add the vegetables to the pot. Then give it a stir. Let's give it a nice story, you know what I mean? I don't want to have the vegetables floating on top. Right, so I'm going to cover the pot. And I'm going to attend to the seasonings. So let's keep on churning. I'm going to add the seasonings now. I'm just giving it a stir, you know what I mean? Cause I don't want the season to be floating on top. I can, I can also hold it and give it a shake like so. You know what I mean? Yeah. As you can see, the food that I go and bubble, seasoning a pot. So I'm gonna allow the season to cook up for a while with the beef. Now I mean, and then I'm gonna add some ketchup into it. That's right now. But say when the season is when the seasons are cooked up with the meat. Then I'll go ahead and add some um, ketchup to it, and that's for taste. So let's keep on show ahead and add some ketchup to it. Like we said before, I won't be adding too much ketchup. The ketchup is just to enhance the flavor, and I'm using cows to put the ketchup. So what I'm gonna do is just to put a cover on and give it a good store like so. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not gonna bother to use a wooden spoon to stir. Just give it a stir by holding both handles and just shake it. And just allow the can to cook until it's finished. So let's keep on tuning. You will see the end results. Okay, so I'm 
pure happenings are going on in the kitchen. So, see the strawberry car. Mmm, my children say it smells delicious to you guys. I'm going to give it a stir. Because this is how I like to pull it and do it. You know. yeah, I mean, just pull it and just give it a stir like so. Five more minutes and then I'm gonna try to frame off. Now the food is finished cooked, so I'm just gonna try to frame off like so. I'm giving it a stew beef at these five more minutes and that should be it. Alright, so let's keep on tuning in and I will show you the end results. Alright, so the stew beef is no complete, so I'm gonna try to frame off. And the food is also cooked, so I'm gonna turn the flame off as well. So, guys, just keep on tuning and you'll see the end results of my cooking. You know what I mean? Yeah, stew beef with food. Yeah, all right. Guys, cooking is one of my passion, and I don't mind taking the guys on this cooking journey with me. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. You do not want to miss out on this cooking journey.